Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Just gonna get into this freaking episode. The beginning of this show, it started so strange. It did not start with a logo, so I had no idea when the hell the damn show started. They are kind of giving like a little foreshadowing of this wedding with Jade and Sean. I'm gonna try to hold back my distaste and dislike of this couple, and I can't stand them. Them getting married and doing this lovey-dovey crap when I and everybody in America, not just me, everybody in America has seen what a shitty couple they really are. And now they're trying to play this fairy tale, mwah, mwah, mwah type situation. And I'm not here for it. But I will calm down that opinion a little bit just for this episode. We are on season number two of Teen Mom, the next chapter. And we're starting off where everybody gets back from Teen Mom family reunion. First, Macy gets back. Now we see the scene of Cheyenne and Zach returning. Now we have this little fake chat. And Cheyenne, I know that I'm no one to talk, but what the hell is with this Bob? You know who you look like with this Bob? Cheyenne, why we do this Bob? I'm sorry. What is with this Bob? And please don't ever do this hairstyle again. I'm sorry, this is just my opinion, but this is who you look like. So Jade is letting them know her and Sean just got settled into their new house. Rihanna's telling the girls that um, this is her very first wedding. She's never been to a wedding. And um, I'm glad you got to go to a wedding in your 20s because I won't tell you how old I am, but I've never been to a wedding at all. Apparently the wedding is one week away. Kate and Tyler, they can't come. They got some family stuff going on. Leah can't come. Corey can, but Taylor can't. Listen. I don't know why we need to know all this, but whatever. So we're here with Jade and her mama is stopping by. What's the problem now, Christy? Cause you always got problems. What's the problem now? I can usually tell as long as I've been watching Teen Mom, I can tell when there's a problem because the music. They says that her mom has been home and sober for six months now, but her past is still on her back. She's dealing with the legal case from six years ago where she was caught with marijuana and violated her probation. More wedding talk. Christy lets Jay know that when she's doing that last fitting for that wedding dress, oh, that's when she's supposed to be in court. And Chow is here and she asks, three days before the wedding. And Christy says, yeah, and she might go to jail that day. She says she really doesn't know what's gonna happen. She could go on probation, she could go to jail. She really has no idea. Child's like, oh my God, Christy, okay. And once again, you're disappointing your daughter, Christy. I, I hate to say it, but at this point, Jade is used to being disappointed by you. That's why I never will understand how she has the audacity to be marrying another addict. Christy lets the girls know it could be up to 30 days locked up. And Christy says if she goes to jail, they will be taking her that day. Anyway, let me just let, I'm going to let Jade say it because I've said it five times. And it keeps coming out wrong. Christy. Yeah, I was going to have you and dad walking down the aisle. Jade says that she's worried about the mom she's always wanted sitting in jail on her wedding day. I hope y'all know when y'all watch my channel that, you know, sometimes bad words will be on this channel. I'm going to try to keep it clean, but I can't make any guarantees. Okay, I'm going to try my best not to be saying bad words, but... um. Why is this, why is she here? Why is she still here? And that's actually the clean version of what I wanted to say. But why is she still here? She who has no custody of either of her children, who is always in some type of relationship. Why is she still here, MTV? I really don't care about what Amber has going on. I really don't. I don't care that she's moving back into her old apartment or home or whatever that she renovated. I don't know why MTV thinks we give a damn to see Amber on the phone with Gary talking about this wedding and how her dates fell through. I'm not really surprised. I'm really not surprised. You beat up every man you get. And then Gary asks about online dating and Amber says that she's not ready for dating until she's fully in the house. Ma'am, where the hell are you fully if you're not in the house? I don't know why I've been watching this show for so long. Okay, ma'am, from this angle, it's beautiful. I like it, okay. I'm still not taking back what I said earlier because <laughs> it looked weird earlier. And yes, don't judge my damn hair. I'm about to do my hair, okay? Zach and her have been continuing to have those conversations after a team on family reunion, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, who cares? Cheyenne says that Zach has been researching different careers. Cheyenne, he's a felon though. And he just doesn't have one felony. He has a few felonies. Go look it up if you think I'm lying. I know the hell I'm talking about. You can research all you want, sir. And do people deserve to be redeemed? Absolutely. But if people cannot understand that when you make mistakes, you have to deal with the consequences of your mistakes. And when you steal people's identity and steal money, then your consequences for that is not being able to land a good job. Do I help you land a good job one day? Um, have you stopped stealing? Have you stopped stealing? 
Have you stopped scheming? If you can answer me yes to that, and yes, fine. You deserve another chance. Okay, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to wear. She's chosen this dress. It's a halter. I think it's going to be cute. And they go from talking about what they're going to wear to the wedding to Zach's broke ass, can't find a job, don't have a career, still thinking about what he going to do in his damn 30s, talking about he want to have a baby. You need to have a career. You need to focus on that. Okay? Not just a criminal career. An actual, an actual career. Okay? I have sympathy on people, okay? I... I understand that sometimes we are of a different mindset. I understand it. I understand it. The only baby you need to be having is a career. Zach says that technically he only has one child. First of all, I would not have another baby with this fool. You're discounting your stepchild? That doesn't even sound right, number one. Number two, is this a competition of who can have the most natural children to get? <laughs> like, <laughs> is this a competition of who can have the most natural children? Cheyenne, I know you chose an attractive man, but you didn't choose a smart one. Stop dating men and women based on how they look. That's all this was about. He ain't got nothing going for himself. Nothing. And now he's not even claiming that he has two children. He's only seeing it as though Ace is his only child. And you have two children, Cheyenne. And he only has one is what he says. And this is a reasoning that he's giving. And sorry, I said that was so weird. And this is a reasoning that he's giving you for wanting another. Ch that is not the reason why you have another baby. Because I don't have enough natural children. I don't have enough natural children. Sorry. I don't have enough natural children is not a valid reason for you to have another baby. And what men don't understand, don't let me get started because this, this video will be an hour long. Most men do understand that women take on the brunt of the work when it comes to a baby. Zach goes on to say that when she walks downstairs and sees her children, she sees herself in both of her children. When he goes down there, he only sees himself in Ace. Why is that not enough? I think every time we have this conversation, I like sneak in the bathroom and like take extra birth control. And she says she does not want to be pregnant right now. She's happy with the way her body looks. Cheyenne says she doesn't want to F with her hormones right now. And do you know the answer that Zach has to what she has to say about being pregnant and having another baby? It's almost like you're being a little selfish. And with that, Cheyenne says, let me go try on this dress because this man is talking crazy. More wedding planning. Thank God, because that's all I'm saying in this scene. Sean is on a call with Zach. Zach's about to pick up some stuff. He has a tie that's going to be there waiting for him for the wedding day. So he looks like everybody else. Yada, yada, yada. Yakity, smackity. Sean gets a text message that one of his groomsmen has court on the day of his wedding. Really trying not to judge the fact that you guys surround yourselves around a lot of people that have to go to court. I know that's not y'all fault, but what the hell? And then Sean mentions that Christy has this weed charge hanging over her head and they're concerned about that too. Sean tells Jade about the groomsmen. Sean says, I think I'm going to ask Devoin. You think Brianna will be okay with this? And Jade says that she'll talk to Brianna. Ashley, you're still here? I thought you left. I thought this show was too good for you. Oh, my bad. I mean, I thought you were too good for this show. Anyway, she's still in Nevada and she's still working hard to get her nursing degree and she's moved into a new apartment. Ashley says that even though her and Barr are already legally married, she was planning a wedding celebration. But it was put on pause when Barr got sentenced to complete his probation in California last year. And Ashley was dealing with the unexpected death of her brother. Ashley says she started to feel that something was off the longer Barr stayed in California. Ashley said something told her to check the phone records, says that there's no reason why you're having a four hour long conversation with somebody that you claim is just a friend. Ashley says that she believes that it was a relationship that was going on for a whole lot of months behind her back and she classifies that as cheating and so do I. Ashley says she's so hurt she doesn't know what to do and mom, are we still calling you pastor? Are we still calling you pastor or T? Which one? You've lost a lot of weight, ma'am. And your hair's grown a lot too. Can you tell me how you retain length? Sorry, I know it's not about this. This is not about me. So T is getting divorced too? Oh man. T moved to Nevada to be with Ashley. Why you didn't tell me you had these? Because I could have used them for the Beyonce concert. Girl, you went to the concert too? You in a beehive? I did not know you was in a beehive, girl. So Ashley let her mom know that she found some stuff on bar and the fact that he was cheating. And T says she knew 
a little bit, but she doesn't know all of the details. Ashley says that she feels so upset and disrespected that she might as well be single. And I know T is happy because let's face it, T, girl, you never liked Barr. I know you, you wasn't happy that he cheated, but you're glad this marriage is over. Barr apologized, but Ashley doesn't believe him. And Ashley says she knows for the past six months that something inappropriate has been taking place. And she says it started as she was burying her only brother. That is a damn dirty... Let me calm down. I don't want to be yelling in your ears. But that is a damn dirty shame. So T says we are still grieving. So at the end of the day, if this situation isn't going to work, just go about your business. Ashley has not yet talked to Holly, their daughter, about the situation but she said they will have that conversation soon cheyenne is here with her mom and they're talking about this wedding can we please get to the wedding because wedding's going to be that fast to recap cheyenne brings up the discussion that she had with zach about having more children margaret who is her mom asks do you want another baby and cheyenne says uh ace was supposed to be my last baby mom says you have two beautiful healthy kids this world is insane it's getting expensive and she ain't lying and she said, it's about more than, oh, I just want to have another kid. So Amber is moving into her newly renovated old new place. Why does your house look like this, Amber? You don't have no kids living with you. You don't have no man living with you. Last time I checked, why didn't you pack your stuff by yourself? Why do you have these men coming here and you're paying extra money for them to pack your stuff? Look at how the guy's looking. He doesn't look happy. This is shameful. Jordan is on the right. Or I'm pointing weird. But Jordan has the braids and Josh doesn't. Okay. I'm not good with names, so y'all better be grateful. So Jordan asks, would you like us to fold your clothes as we're packing? And Amber, you still with that ugly ass top knot. What is, <laughs> I hate this hairstyle so much. Oh my God. Anyway, I don't have any eyebrows. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so Amber says, if the clothes are clean, you can fold them. Amber, how the hell would they know if the clothes are clean? And then Jordan says, are we supposed to sniff the clothes? Or Jordan, you should have never asked if you have to fold them. Just dump them in the box. This is when I think life is not fair. Somebody like her that abuses people, that has her kids taken away from her, gets to live in the lap of mother freaking luxury. She says to her friend, this is a new beginning for her, her family, and her children. How? None of them are with you. I'm not trying to judge, but you have, I almost said McDonald's money, but... <laughs> Is this the house that you were like, yay, we moved into a new house? I mean, I live in an apartment, so maybe I shouldn't be talking. This is the house that you were so excited about? So Jade talks to Brianna about Devoin. He's going to be walking with her. He's not just invited as a groomsman, obviously. He's going to be walking down the aisle with Brianna. How awkward. But Brianna finds it funny. She doesn't think anything of it. So it's fine. All right. So Christy is on her way to the courthouse with her mom and she's calling Jade and letting her know she's going to be at the wedding. Two days until the wedding and everyone is on the way. Ashley says that this relationship is not worth it. She just doesn't have the energy to prolong it. So now she's talking to her sister, Chris, who I like a lot, by the way. She's very nice. And she lets her know I'm thinking about filing for divorce. Ashley no longer trusts Barr. She says she doesn't know how it's going to play out. And she has a lot to lose if she gets pissed off and wants to light his stuff on fire. Okay. So divorce is the best thing. Chris asks Ashley what she said to Holly. Ashley really wants to be cautious about what she says to Holly because that's still her dad. Ashley's going to talk to Holly. Holly is in kindergarten. She's going to give it to her in a way that she can easily digest without giving her too much information. Ashley has the divorce papers. Everyone's arriving, getting ready for this wedding. More wedding talk. Jade and Brianna are talking about the odds that were stacked up against Jade and Sean. Are you assuming that these problems that you always had are just going to disappear after the wedding day? Anyway, I, I promised I wouldn't go there, so I'm not. Jade says she thinks that she spoke this into existence. You spoke getting married to Sean, this toxic relationship you guys have had for like 10 years. You spoke this into existence. Please use your powers for other things in the future. I'm going to let y'all have y'all little fairy tale for episode one. But I can promise you in about five or six episodes, y'all going to be fighting again. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Can we please get through this wedding already so I can move on to the next show that I need to recap. And everyone is getting ready for the wedding. So I'm not sure why when everybody's getting ready for the wedding, 
Cheyenne and Zach had to go visit Macy and Taylor getting ready. And they had to ask about Ryan. Is now the time to be talking about Ryan? No, it's not. But anyway, we find out that Ryan is in a halfway house because Ryan is also addicted to drugs. So Taylor and Macy are saying that Bentley is having a lot better relationship with Ryan than he has had in the past. Okay, I'm seeing some team mom people in here. I'm just spotting them out. I saw Kayla and that guy. I forgot his name. What was his name again? Ryan. And here's Brittany. Why y'all not mentioning that Brittany and them was there? You know what, MTV? You just talk about whatever you feel like talking about. Kind of like my recaps. You know, they'd be all over the place sometimes. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I just noticed the little things. Okay? I noticed the little things that other people don't. In tears. Why is this lady making this ugly ass face? <laughs> Why does the voice look so good? And I'm really getting creeped out right here. Sean, you have a twin brother? Sean, you have a mother freaking twin. Well, I can see who the better looking twin is. Anyway, I'm leaving alone. Leave it alone. Anyway, let's move on. I would move myself over, but for some reason, this program is not letting me move myself. I just want to smack it to smithereens, okay? So I'm just going to do it over here on this side and say that Jade looks a freaking amazing. Her hair is gorgeous. Her dress is gorgeous. Although, I would have put more bright colors in my bouquet. Might have put some orange and some pink, but that's just me. But other than that, um, beautiful. Even Christy, Christy. She looks so beautiful in that black dress. I just, I love it. I love it. I just want all of you to behave after the wedding, okay? All right, I figured out what the hell the problem was. I don't know how the hell it got locked, but you know what? I unlocked it, okay? I'm here now. I'm here now. And uh, yeah, so anyway, they do their vows. They get married, and y'all know how weddings go. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. So they're taking pictures right now, and now, of course, it's time to party. So Cheyenne is here with her dad and we're at this wedding we're having a ball we're having fun and we once again are bringing up this baby why why are you talking about it so much I, i'm really convinced that these producers be telling you guys what to say and now zach comes out and they're talking about this prospective baby together again like can we just end the show now at this point let's just end the show so zach says this is the last place i'd expect you to be wanting to talk about this can we please table this conversation until like next year? I pray. Please, I beg. I beg. And of course, it's party time. You know, Corey has Taylor stay home with the kids so he can come and party. He cannot miss the opportunity to freaking party. This is Jade's friend and Amber, aka Eyebrows. <laughs> she dancing all up on Chelsea. You gay now, Amber? All right, so we're here with Jade and she says that everybody in that room at that reception knew how hard they fought to make it through the good fight. I, I'm not exactly understanding what's going on right now at the end of these two minutes left in the show, but my mind is a little blown, just a little bit. I do understand that it is uh, Gay Pride Month. Are you doing this just for Gay Pride Month or, you know, Amber, girl, I just, I just don't believe anything that you do nowadays on the show. I know it's just reviews and I know it's just to keep you on the show. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. We have reached the end. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.